2018 has come and gone, but that doesn't mean the tech from 2018 has went anywhere. In this video, I'm gonna give you my favorite pieces of tech of last year. Let's go ahead and do this. continuation of my new mini series best of 2018 if you missed the first video which was about camera gear make sure to watch it at that card if camera gear isn't your thing then this video is for you because it's more of a generalized tech video which i'm going to cover my favorite tablet my favorite phone my favorite gaming device my favorite laptop my favorite random piece of tech as well as my favorite smart home device so let's go ahead and kick this video off Number one is gonna to go to my favorite tablet of the year, which is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. While there are times I wish I would've went with the 11 inch, the 12.9 inch has really grown on me and I really appreciate the extra screen real estate, especially for photo editing and even video editing, which reminds me the 12.9 inch and even the 11 inch are extremely powerful iPads and you can accomplish high resolution, raw photo editing, and even 4K video editing using something like LumaFusion, which is just, awesome. And they've done a really good job with making some cosmetic changes to the new iPads by shrinking down the bezels and also adding a USB-C port and the magnetic connection for the Apple Pencil, which also charges it, which is night and day better than the previous option. Now, even though Apple has done a great job at shrinking the bezels and overall form factor of the 12.9 inch iPad to make it a little bit more travel friendly and easier to use in your hands, don't get it confused. It's still a really really big iPad. The only difference is the fact that it's not only big, it's really beautiful and it's extremely powerful, just like Oprah. Also, consuming content on the new iPad Pros is a wonderful experience. I mean, the displays are gorgeous, just like previous iterations, and ProMotion is just awesome. And I really hope that ProMotion makes its way to the new iPhones and also the Macs, but we'll have to see. But in any case, 2018 iPad Pros, definitely my favorite tablets of the year. Number two is gonna go to my favorite phone of 2018, the Galaxy Note 9. Even though I do primarily use an iPhone as my main device, it's specifically to do with the ecosystem. I heavily rely on FaceTime and iMessage in order to communicate with my loved ones. Now, before you blast me in the comment section though, and go all Linus on your keyboard and say, WhatsApp is so much better and that everybody in your country uses WhatsApp, Understand that I'm here in the US and in the US, we primarily use three ways to communicate when it comes to texting. We have iMessage, we have our basic SMS and MMS stock system that comes with your phone, and then we have Facebook Messenger. There are a few people that use WhatsApp and other texting applications, but they primarily use them to communicate with people outside of the US, so yeah. Think about that before you go all hateful eight on me down there. In any case, the Galaxy Note 9 just checks all the right boxes when it comes to the perfect phone. It is a little bit expensive, but it's always going on sale. You can get it anywhere between like 650 to 850 throughout the year. You just gotta be patient when it goes on sale, but it checks all the right boxes for the perfect phone. I mean, you have a large, beautiful quad HD display, best in the business. You have great speakers. You have an IP68 rating. You have an S Pen, which that honeymoon period might wear off for you. But if you're a heavy S Pen user, you're not gonna be disappointed. You have a gaming mode. You have six gigabytes of RAM. You have an SD card slot. You have fast charging. You have fast wireless charging. I don't know, like a gorgeous design, no notch. Literally checks all the right boxes and easily my favorite phone of 2018. Number three comes from the smart home category, which is kind of weird for me because I don't do a whole lot of smart home stuff on the channel, but that might change this year. So go ahead and cast your vote at the poll in the card at the top. In any case, my favorite smart home device of 2018 is the Google Home Hub. It's really silly, I know, and I don't know how it compares to the Lenovo Smart Display, but coming from an Echo Show, I gotta say, the Home Hub is just night and day better than my old Echo Show. The display, while being low resolution, is absolutely gorgeous. The speakers sound great. They're not the best, but they're definitely better than the Echo Show. And having all of Google services and their apps built right into the Home Hub is incredible because I can simply access everything with my voice, which is just dope. Also, ever since I switched all of my smart home devices from the Amazon ecosystem to Google Home, 
I gotta say, they just function better. They're a lot faster, they're more responsive. And since I use a lot of Nest products, the link between Google and Nest, because they're the same company, is just outstanding. Number four is my favorite gaming device of 2018. And this one was a little bit tough because A, I'm not a gaming channel, so I don't cover a whole lot of gaming stuff. I do like gaming, but I don't put a lot of time into it like these gaming guys do. And there wasn't really any gaming consoles released in 2018 outside of some limited edition ones that were pretty much cosmetic changes to previous consoles. So I had to think about what I got this year that was released last year or towards the end of last year that I really enjoy. And that was the Xbox One X. Now, ultimately, the Nintendo Switch is my most used console strictly because of portability and how easy it is to game on that thing. But the Xbox One X is just a freaking beast, especially with the 4K HDR 60 frames per second gaming with a TV that does support all that. It's just a phenomenal system. And now that Microsoft has stated they're already working on the new generation of the Xbox, codenamed Scarlet, and uh, yeah, Microsoft's doing a thing. Number four spot, easily, Xbox One X. Number five, my favorite laptop. And this one was really tough. Making me decide between these two laptops is like handing a cat lover a box of kittens and saying, you can only have one. I really had to think about the laptop that not only handled my workflow the best, but was also the most flexible since I do edit other people's videos from time to time again, and also the laptop that was very travel friendly. And that is the 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now I don't have the one with the Vega, but don't even get me started because I think that is some bull <laughs> The fact that Apple refreshed a 15 inch lineup just a few months after releasing a refreshed 15 inch lineup really was like a dagger to the kidney. In any case, it was between this computer and the Dell XPS 9570. I love that laptop. I like the fingerprint sensor that's built on it more than Touch ID. I like the keyboard. I like the overall form factor, even though it is a little bit chunky. I like having regular USB ports and an SD card slot, but ultimately, the lack of Final Cut Pro on Windows is what did it for me because there's a lot of projects that I work on that just require me to edit in Final Cut. So I had to switch to the MacBook Pro 15 inch 2018. And it's been a really great experience to be honest. Like it can handle my workflow. I edit Red Raw, I edit uh, Canon Raw Lights, and I also edit 10-bit ProRes in Final Cut. While the Adobe side of things could use a little work, I don't think it's that bad. I'm able to manage working in Premiere on this laptop just fine. And while the touch bar isn't the most practical implementation on a laptop, it does have its uses, just few and far. In any case, my favorite laptop, it's the 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro. So yeah. Number six, which is my last minute piece of tech that I feel like deserves to be in this video. It's the Boosted Board Mini X which is awesome. I've been a long time user of the Z board. And while I do prefer the design of the Z board, I love the compact form factor of the boosted mini X. And plus the pressure sensitive foot pedals on the Z board have almost killed me a few times, but the boosted board mini X is still really dangerous. I mean, just look at this. Look, 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 look. You can see it. It's right there. Right, right there. That actually happened with the boosted board mini X because the torque on it is just insane. I had it in pro mode, didn't know it was in pro mode went to turn by, you know, popping up the front wheels and I accidentally accelerated, board went up like a rocket and I went that way like a capsule breaking off a rocket. The Boosted Board Mini X is incredible. It's small, compact. It does weigh quite a bit. That might throw you off because you're gonna see this little thing. You're like, oh, that's awesome, super travel friendly. It has quite a bit of weight to it, but the overall usability of it, the speed, having a remote is just so much better. I really, Really like the Boosted Board Mini X, and honestly, it's one of the best purchases that I made in 2018, even though I did get it as a Christmas gift, and it's making me sell my Z board because this thing is just legit. That pretty much does it for this video. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do to that like button. If you have any questions or you want me to cover some stuff mentioned in this video in a little bit greater detail, let me know down in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the first video of this series, which is about camera gear, if that's something you're into. Also, let me know down in the comments, what do you want to see? I have like another two videos planned for this series. So if there's a specific topic you want me to cover, let me know down below. I got some ideas, but I want to hear back from you all. So uh, just go ahead and do that that down, you know, down there. But anyways, uh, like, comment, subscribe, you know, do your thing. CES, yeah, let's do this.